I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the organizers and the delegates of this symposium to reflect back on the 25 years since Eritrean independence. Thanks to Bay Area Eritreans for Democratic Change for reaching out to us, the Afar Eritreans. We are excited to be part of effort by Eritreans to consolidate their struggle for democratic change in Eritrea. Eritrean Afar state in exile, is is the voice of Eritrean Afar people. Ease draws its wide mandate from the political and transitional Afar leadership, the leadership of Afar women and youth group, Eritrean Afar diaspora, and Eritrean Afar refugees. Ease aspires to establish an autonomous state of Tankalia within Eritrea, where the Afar people can freely exercise their rights of self-determination and the rights of self-government and secure their way of life and to live in peace and harmony with the fellow Eritreans. In this presentation, I hope to introduce you to the Afar nation prior to Eritrea, their sacrifices in the land we came to know as Eritrea, and the unfortunate and the sad realities of Afar, our people under current Eritrean re regime. The Afar are one of Africa's long-established First Nation inhabitants in the Horn of Africa. The Afar Triangle lies at the convergence of Ethiopia, Djibouti and Eritrea. As indigenous nation, the Afar are heavily dependent and attached to their land and their environment. The Afar have been practicing their distinct culture, tradition and a unique economic pursuits and sustenance based on their nomadic lifestyle, livestock raising and, and trade, farming, fishing, salt extraction in the coastal areas since the time immemorial. Some historians credit the introduction of Islam into the continent of Africa through Afar in a place called Meidiri near Dahlak Islands. When the companions of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, fled Mecca, Saudi Arabia after persecution. Today, the Afar practice moderate form of Sunni Islam in some areas of Afar hinterland mixing Islam with their indigenous tradition. Politically, the Afar societies in this region has been organized into independent territories, each ruled by its own sultanate, sheikhdom, and clan system. The Afar nation have been self-governing themselves autonomously and practice their indigenous customary laws, self-rule in accordance to their legal system called Mad'a without interference. In the 1860s, the advent of European colonialism separated the Afar territories into modern-day sovereignties of Djibouti, Eritrea, and Ethiopia. Similarly, the Afar region was exposed internally aggressions and occupations by successive Ethiopian kings from the highlands. In all of these historic events, the Afar nations have paid huge sacrifice, fought decisive battles against the occupying forces and defended their land and their territories. In Tankalia, the Afar resistance to the occupation was led by Sultan of Garifu, Bidu, Sultan Yasin Ahau, and his sons, Sultan Muhammad Haisama, continued to the day of Sultan Yasin Haisama. Anti-colonialism resistance by the Afar against the fascist Italians would go, for, would go on for another, for, for, for another 30 years, with, where thousands of Afar lost their lives, prevented Mussolini forces from penetrating the Afar hinterland and territories into Ethiopia. After fierce battles against Mussolini forces, the young Sultan Yasin Haisama, at the age of 39, was killed in the village of Biru in 1931. <clears throat> the defeat of Afar Sultan cleared the way for Italians to construct the main artery to link the highlands of Ethiopia to the sea outlet in Eritrea. Asab, stretching from Asab to Addis Ababa, Desi, asphalt road was built in 1935. Prior to European colonization, the Afar lands were the subject of a colonization by Ottoman Empire. Thousands of Afar died fighting the Ottoman Turks until, until today. There are Afar cemeteries in a place called Kedenta in Dankalia. Similarly, the Afar Sultan of Gobad, Laouita Hummad, was captured by French colonialists in Djibouti, taken to Madagascar 
by French where he died in captivity in 1931. Today, my people, the Eritrean Afar, perceived as the enemy sympathizers and labeled as those who want to break up Eritrean state. The Eritrean Afar, like Ibrahim Shehem, Muhammad Omar Akito, were the pioneers of Eritrean liberation struggle. During the 50s, the 60s, and the 70s, the Eritrean Afar were the faces of the Eritrean resistance to occupation. Martyrs like Idris Gumhe, Yasin Abdullah, Muhammad Rashid Gaas, Ali Gafu, Muhammad Usman, Dini Ismail, Ahmad Ahab, Ahmad Hilal, to mention a few, were the leading military commanders, not only in Dankalia, but extended to Samar. The Afar participation was the turning point for liberation struggle and gave the ELF much needed access to the sea and supply rules. The Afar heroes did not give their lives in vain so their children could be subjected to discrimination and marginalization today. In a stark contrast to European colonialism, today Dankalia is colonized from within. Today our people, the Eritrean Afar, are being mass displaced, mass murdered, their resources exploited, their social economic way of life has been annihilated, their distinct identity and their history is under threat and unrecognizable. The current regime is removing Afar from Dankali and colonizing the area with others. In order to remove the Afar, the regime is using mass murder, rape, kidnapping, political assassination, and extraditional killing of Afar leadership. In addition to violent persecution, the Eritrean government has deployed a systemic policy to destroy Afar identity. Their indigenous customary laws, their traditional economies, confiscating Afar lives and properties. As the Afar leadership, we have filed numerous human rights complaints against the state of Eritrea with the United Nations Human Rights Council, with the United Nations Special Rapporteur, and the Commission of Inquiry. The Afar are forced into displacement for their indigenous land in Eritrea. That is the conclusion by United Nations Special Rapporteur on the situation of human rights in Eritrea. In May, in May 28, 2013, report so United Sheila Kita wrote, found that the current Eritrean regime has been systematically targeting the Eritrean Afar people with extrajudicial killings, enforced disappearance, torture, rape, in order to force them, the Afar, into displacement from their traditional territories along the Red Sea. The United Nations Human Rights Council unanimously adopted uh, Special Rapporteur's finding. In February 2015, Human Rights Watch, in its annual World Report in 2015 described the situation of Afar as follows. Members of Afar and Kunama ethnic group flee because of land expropriation and discrimination by the government. In June 4, 2014, the Commission of Inquiry on Human Rights in Eritrea has further validated Afar allegation with respect to Afar displacement for their homeland. The Commission of Inquiry stated that the actions by Eritrean authority may be construed as an international act to dispossess them, the Afar, of their ancestral land, their livelihood, their culture, and that the killing of members of Afar ethnic group and reports of existence of mass graves have all triggered their displacement for their homeland within the country and across borders to Ethiopia and Djibouti. This has posed great difficulty to their livelihood as they depend on their traditional lands for sustenance as indigenous ethnic group. This is in paragraph 56 in paragraph 1120b in the Commission of Inquiry report. Let me tell you now why Afwerki and the PFDG is targeting the Afar in Dankalia. Dankalia presents a geostrategic economic asset for ruling PFDG. Prior to Afwerki's demographic change, Dankalia used to be the second largest province in the country with approximately 40,000 square kilometers of coastline, territories, resource-rich, vast desert with, with untapped natural resources, various minerals, base metals, potash, and, and natural gas. Dankalia constitutes to more than 75% of Eritrea's economic future. With more than 1,100 kilometers of coastline, over 200 islands and pristine beaches, the Kalias coast has a great potential to support future tourism industry of Eritrea, not to mention once bustling Port of Assad. 
Geopolitically, Dankalia constitutes 99.9% .9 of Eritrea's strategic interest. Located in strategically near international seaways, shipping routes, which are increasingly vital for economic and security related interests by regional and international powers. The coast of Dankalia is now the center of international strategic military partnership between the Gulf, of St Gulf states and the regime in Eritrea. After successfully displacing the Afar from their resource rich strategic coast, Afwork is now selling the land, the airspace, the territorial waters of Dankalia to the likes of United Arab Emirates for billions of dollars. National Marine Dredging Corporation, owned by United Arab Emirates, is now removing the Afar from their traditional lands, homes, businesses, and strategic coast by bulldozing Afar salt mines, uprooting thousands of indigenous garaito trees, fencing off access to the sea in the area used, used by the traditional Afar fishermen. Military facilities are being constructed after destroying Afar businesses. A new port and airport dredging activities are clearing away and displacing hundreds of Afar families. Some of the land earmarked for this development contains remains of my close relatives in mass graves which Commission of Inquiries referred to in its report. This is a crime scene that needs to be protected. Afwarki and his junta is now selling over 400 square kilometers of parash rich Afar lands resources to another multinational corporation from Australia. The Kululi Parash project is estimated at billions of dollars and PFDG elites own 50% of it. None of these corporations and foreign governments are concerned about the Afar human rights violation, the impact on the environment, and do not care for their corporate social responsibilities. Afwarki is telling the Australians and the Emiratis these these are no man's land. Don't worry about any corporate social responsibility. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is this land, this resources, the history of Dankalia belongs to the people you see behind me here. These are real people. I took this picture myself in Hamad Ela, one of the closest border crossing near Badda in Eritrea. These women, children, fled Eritrea because the Eritrean regime came to their villages one morning, took their men at gunpoint, executed them in cold blood in front of their women and children. Stories of horror, ethnic cleansing, echoed throughout Dankalia. Mass graves of Afar victims are found in many parts of Eritrea, in places like Wadde, Gaharre, Abih Takoma, in Hafsile, in Asela, in other villages across Dankalia. I have here some of the names of Afwarki's henchmen, the chain of command responsible for ethnic cleansing of Afar in Dankalia. And it starts with Major General Hamad Karikare, Eritrean Navy, Major General Haile Samuel China, Eritrean Army, Major General Gerez Giher Andamariam, Wudju, Eritrean Army, who has recently died, Colonel Muhammad Ali, Wadi Halima, Eritrean Navy, Tasfa Mariam Hagos, Head of National Security, and intelligence in Lankalia. Afwerki and the PFDG have collectively killed, raped, displaced more Eritrean Afar than any previous regime put together. This is a work of new form of colonialism and occupation. We must collectively denounce the crimes against humanity. The colonization of Afar land and resource must end. Policies of assimilation and displacement must be condemned by all of us. What is happening to ethnic Afar in our Konama brothers and sisters is absolute genocide. We are not against development of Eritrea's economic future. What we are against is the development at the cost of our people, our dignity, our culture, and our economic way of life. With all Dankalia's riches, and resources in the Afar, Eritreans remain one of the most impoverished communities in Eritrea. We want to build our traditional economy and modernize it. We want to pres preserve our long established and distinct identity in our way of life. Afwerki is now telling the world that Eritreans are 
self-sustaining resilient people this is after deliberately destroying a far fishing economy their lucrative salt mining businesses close down all trade activities destroying the animal world of the far people we don't need a forky to tell us we are resilient and self-sustained indigenous people the far nation have self-sustained their livelihood in dankalia since the time of moses we just want to be left alone the strategic coast, the mining resources of Dankalia should not be the source of exploitation and displacement. These are our land, these are our resources. If, if Eritrea chooses to develop the resources in the strategic coast, it should recognize the far ownership to the land, the fair share of royalties paid, job and social and economic responsibility of Afar are met. As Eritrean Afar in exile, we have a strategic plan to lift our people out of poverty and marginalization. We have a plan to build first ever Afar University in Asa, based on our own distinct culture and the environment and the modern technologies to advance the higher learning capability of our Afar youth, future generation that will contribute to the development of Eritrea. We have a plan to leverage our strategic coast and especially Port of Hassan to revitalize our border communities who are at the verge of famine and starvation. As you may know, currently part of Ethiopia and Somalia are, are facing one of the worst drought and famine in 50 years. This includes a far region in Ethiopia affecting some 16 million people. Do you think our people, your people, in the border areas are immune to this? They have been dying quietly without any international attention. Afwerki classifies Dankalia as, as a closed military zone. Afwerki deliberately kept away the international access, the foreign aid from coming into a far population. According to some international news media, Eritrea was asked to use its port to assist with, with food delivery to affected areas in Ethiopia. Eritrea denied granting the access to, to our support. Going forward, we must collectively confront the policies of tyranny, ethnic discrimination, assimilation, marginalization of Afar and other smaller ethnic minorities in Eritrea. The new Eritrea must embrace diversity. I think there is a genuine effort taking place by opposition groups in conferences hall like yours all over the diaspora. One of the key factors required for a democratic transition and nation-building process is the constitution of a country. Eritrean, Eritrea requires power-sharing constitution to reflect the diversity of multi-ethnic, multicultural, multi-faith societies of Eritrea. We, as opposition group, we must open up the dialogue on unimplemented Eritrea's 1997 constitution. In 2012, with the help of Professor Joseph Magnet, who is a constitutional expert and advisor to Afar people. We have had the privilege of hosting the chairman of Eritrea's Constitutional Commission, Professor Berket Habtasilasi, highly respected Eritrean scholar. We have raised the Afar concern, the absence of minority rights in the 1997 constitution with the Berket, uh, Dr. Berket. Here's how Berket Here's how Dr. Burkett explains the absence of Afar rights 1997 constitution. In our conversation with Professor Magnet, I mentioned two important facts. The timing of writing of the constitution was that in the context of 30 year war and most people of that generation regarded themselves as socialists. The socialist ethos was the, the crucial point of the creation of values that were understood to be the main principles. The mindset did not consider the potential for harm to minority nationalities. We had the mentality of we are all in together, we are one people, indivisible, that kind of mentality dominated our thinking. I, I don't think we went to sufficient length to consider the possibilities that our framework may not work for the minorities and that made hubris possible. Hubris from dominant groups like the Highlanders. It is very difficult for one person to accept the possibility that we have made a mistake excluding everything with the minority people. It takes very special person to admit they were wrong. 
Afar community in Canada thank Dr. Burkett for his, his solidarity with the Afar people. Looking forward, the 1997 Constitution should not be implemented without modification made to the rights of Eritrean Afar and other minority nationalities. This is excessively centralized constitution. The 1997 Constitution contains no chapters on minority rights. Article 31 of the Constitution ensured that Eritrea's central institution will be dominated by larger nationality, as they are now. The 1997 Constitution contains no guarantees for the autonomies of the, or rights of regional authorities. Article 1.5 gives the central authorities full control over the regions with the carte blanche over Afar economy, resources, governing structure, and society. Centralized power has been used to reorganize the regions, depreciate their powers and territories. Dankalia, for example, has been reduced in size, and all of it are subject to rule by Nanafar. Article 23.2 of 1997 Constitution declares all lands, all natural resources, below and above the surface, of the territories of Eritrea belongs to the state. The interests the citizens shall have in land shall be determined by law. This article expropriates the indigenous rights of Afar people to their soil, contrary to international law. It is deprives them of any guarantees for their traditional pursuits at all. It allows central authorities to appropriate the traditional lands, the resources of the Afar pastoralists, and sell them to foreign multinational corporations and resource extraction companies. This is the sad reality of our people today. Dankalia and the Afar were the birthplace of liberation struggle. I really feel Dankalia and the Afar can make or break today's Eritrea. We are here to play a positive role. <coughs> we want to build. Eritrea not destroyed. We want to restore the dignity of our people, which is unfortunately unrecognizable under PFDG system. Going forward, it is in the best interest of larger nationalities to recognize the indigenous rights of Afar, the Konamas, to their land, resources, and other smaller marginalized communities of Eritrea. Afar self-rule will strengthen Eritrean unity and the sovereignty. We want to we want to break the system, not Eritrea. I want to thank the organizers for putting together this critically needed platform for honest and difficult discussions. I want to thank Brother Ephraim especially for reaching out to me and the FR cause. I will be more than happy to answer any questions from the audience. Thank you. God bless you.